911. Hi, I'm walking my dog on Brookside Lane and I can see some girl's body lying face down on Abner Farm. I... Oh, my boy. Please send help. She was the only family I had left. I couldn't even bring myself to look at her body after what they'd done to her. This was the most violent act of aggression I've ever witnessed. See, Panshaw's a quiet town most of the year, even during pine cone season, it's quiet. So, so what occurred with Jessica Abner shocked everyone. Jessica was one of the sweetest people I ever met. Like, nobody had a problem with that girl, nobody. I still can't believe that was the last time I was ever gonna see her. I was just so focused on the pine cone race that... Jessica and Carson were like a perfect match for each other. Oh. <laughs> Happy birthday! It's not my birthday. <laughs> God damn, you need a crowbar to separate those two. Yeah, we used to joke around with Carson, uh, tell him that the pine cone racing was his, his one true love, but... Um, then Jessica came along, and well, she changed all that, so. What is pine cone racing? What, where, what is, where the fuck are you from? To a lot of folks, Panshaw is pine cone racing. Essentially, it's 14.3 mile race from the top of Mount Panshaw to Water's Edge Trade Point. Racers are called sweepers, and each sweeper has got three things. A pine cone, a regulation broom, and a tank that they carry on day back. Now, in order to advance their pine cone, the sweepers must swing a broom at it, but the regulation bristles are so flaccid that uh, full swing only moves the pine cone a matter of inches. Not to mention, there's no set track. It's not for the weak. Now, it's worth noting, Jessica was dating five-time Panshaw pine cone champion Carson Moore, arguably the greatest sweeper of all time. That kid knows his way around a Panshaw pine cone, and it's extremely sexually attractive. This was the first one I won. It was in the women's division because I applied into the wrong category. This is my World Series in 1998, uh, 1988. A lot of people don't even know I do charity. This was Tabitha. And there's this guy. The day before the big race, Kona Palooza got a little out of hand. <laughs> Lloyd was talking to my lady at the party. Over the last five races, Carson has beat out Lloyd Jr. every time. And those two can't stand each other. So I turned to them and I said, Why are you talking to Snapback? What's your business, Carson Moore? Smashing Carson's pine cone wasn't against the rules, but it was wrong. You just don't bring that junk around Palooza. The whole Lord Jr. thing, being an angry guy, made everyone really uncomfortable, so of course she left. That was the last time anyone saw my baby girl alive. I tell you what, that Carson Lord Jr. fight was about a lot more than some girl. For 25 years, Lloyd's father owned six acres of the Brightcliff Flatlands. That's the easiest terrain to race on. And since private property can only be crossed by a direct family member, Lloyd Riggins Jr. and Sr. had a massive advantage for nearly three decades. That was until they busted Lloyd Sr. for mortgage fraud and he lost everything. And the prosecutor, none other than Carson's pa, Carson Moore. This leveled the playing field, and Carson ain't lost since. Now the only private course land is Daryl Abner's farm. Eight hours after the race started, a call came into the station. It was Jessica Abner. Nobody picked up. See, with all the city's resources focused on policing the games, I will admit, the Panshaw Pineco race is a gaping blind spot in our justice system. Man, what irks me to this day is, you know, what was Jessica doing down by her farm? She was supposed to be manning the South Station at Greenbrier Forest. I'm like, bitch, where the heck are you? Lord Jr. got penalized half an hour ago. When sweepers violate a rule, an officer escorts them to the nearest sap station where tree sap is added to the tank on their back in five to 10 pound increments. Which makes it damn near impossible to glide, carve, or pivot. You don't want a sap penalty. So when Lloyd Jr. gets to the sap station and Jessica Abner's missing, all hell breaks loose. I've been waiting here damn near an hour for my sap. Hello? 
because Junior can't proceed until he gets rationed his tree sap. You best believe somebody gonna pay for this! Now I'm getting buried in paperwork because goddamn Jessica Abner ain't where she said she'd fucking be. <laughs> Obviously now I know there were extenuating circumstances at play. With all that mayhem, that ain't even the story of the race. Ray Buckley was. Ray Buckley. Ray mother freaking Buckley. Look you guys, it's Ray! Hey, it was carnage! He was whipping it around! He was going nuts! Get out, Let's go, Ray! And Ray got greedy. Went for a 900 backside mute grab off a tree stump, snapped his leg like a twig. I'm in his ear and I'm saying, you're being crazy! And he says, no, what's crazy is your mommy should suck my daddy big cock in high school. With all the chaos of the day, I wasn't able to keep track of my score. It's a miracle I wasn't audited. Officials require sweepers to report their score through randomized audits. And if you get it wrong, you, sir, have a date with the Crate of Confusion. What? The Crate of Confusion is an 8x8 box that's 12 feet deep in the ground, okay, that's filled with 500 beads. You gotta organize the beads by color. There's a light strobing in there to the tempo of a human heartbeat. It's hell on earth. We'd thrown Tommy Cooper in it earlier that day, but with all the controversies piling up, we'd forgot to let him out. When that poor Tommy kid came out of that box, he was completely nonverbal. <laughs> but by then, Carson was already down by Treasure Point, Pinecone Brim and all. That crafty son of a bitch, he took Chattahoochee straights and freaking floated his coat, like in the damn movie. I mean, come on now. You don't get a lot of young men like that in Pancho. Got the mind of a war general. Would have been a good officer too if he wasn't so goddamn physically gifted. Floating your cone is for cowards. There he goes again. <laughs> Baby, I told you that he didn't win by floating his cone, he won by foot. The Hollywood man just said he floated the damn thing. I was working Sap Station 14, honey, okay? I would have seen him. Well, he didn't go through Briarcliff because I would have seen him too, all right? He must have gone through Abner Farm. I mean, he must have. Lord and Savior, oh my God. He had to have been with Jessica. Oh my God. God damn it! I trusted that man! That, that fucker cheated! He cheated! Wait, but Abner Farm is private land. That ain't playable court. At the time, we didn't think much of the way Carson crossed the finish line. It's a tough terrain. But now I'm starting to think there's a chance that blood did not belong to him. Carson's a hero around these parts. I'd be careful going around alligating he didn't play within PPA-regulated course boundaries. You hear that? I'm not a cheater. <laughs>